Anakin, I have the high- You were saying, master? Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Overview. Today, let's take a look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends Infinity Saga, Thor Ragnarok Surtur. This week's theme is large boxes. Because like the Wolverine set I looked at earlier in the week, Surtur's box is, uh, it's big. This is one of the figures I left to fate. I didn't pre-order it. I didn't get online, hunt it down, anything like that. But I wandered through Target yesterday morning and there it was. And I thought, oh, why didn't I pre-order that? Because that looks badass. Looking at the package, it's quite a bit... Well, okay, I'll say that. Design-wise, it's not much different from the rest of the Infinity Saga figures. It's just, you know, larger than the rest of them. There's the star fill that always makes me feel like it's dirty. It's dusty, but it's not. On the back, poster for Thor Ragnarok with a kind of bio for Surtur. The Eternal Flame. Attention, danger, but... The real warnings right there on the front. They definitely do not want you shoving this thing in your mouth, even though it looks like a kind of a medium rare steak with a good char on it. Ooh. Top Thor Ragnarok on bottom. There's more warnings. Legalese, barcode. But we're gonna open it up, see what's going on here. Oh, it's just a single piece of tape. Marvel Legends, you crack open the bottom. Wow, it, this is another one of those figures that you don't realize the size of it until you actually open it up. It's kind of fruit by the footish. Or candied bacon? Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I may be hungry. Oh. We're gonna switch things up a little bit, start out with size and comparisons because I feel like that's one of the bigger gripes with this figure. Surtur to the top of his head is about 11 and a half inches and then to the top of the horns is almost 13. If you Google Thor Ragnarok Surtur height, it just, the first thing you see is 18 feet. So yes, this is actually six and a half inches short. And comparing him to the Marvel Legends Ragnarok Thor, and uh, Dark World Thor, I think. Surtur is still impressively large compared to them, but in the actual movie, I think Thor comes up to about his kneecap or something. But this is at the time Hasbro was also making the Thors huge. I actually used the Mezco 112 Collective Ragnarok Thor in my display, but that doesn't make Surtur seem any larger. There is still a height discrepancy. But I feel like this is a good balance. I mean, they gave us a larger figure. They kept the price point manageable. And it sounds dismissive, but... I wouldn't have room for an actual 18 inch Surtur on my shelf. So I can see why they did this. Would I like a larger one? Well, hell yeah, but this will work in my display. Because he still towers over the Build-A-Figure Ursa Major and is not bad with the old Toy Biz Build-A-Figure Galactus, who has seen better days. Those colors are faded and those knees loosey-goosey. And yes, I said knees. Here's that comparison. Looking over the details, oh man, the translucent plastic works so well here. Well, that in conjunction with the paint job on top of it and the different yellows and reds and the black on top. Well, I say black. It's like a deep, 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 deep red. Light shines through it. I mean, look at that. It looks like he's on fire. You put this on the shelf with some creative lighting, some LEDs or something behind it. Oh yeah, he's just gonna glow. Embers, he's smoldering. Everything has a texture to it. You can see some musculature in places, but then on top of that, like I said earlier, some char, some burnt ends. There's flame to it, and in fact, you get up on the shoulders, there's some bigger flames coming up and off of it. Little of that on the outside of the bicep, down here on the forearm. Not much to the legs, though there may be a little here, but you get it close to the texture, and it's kind of flame-like on top of looking like a burnt log or charcoal something. I'm just now noticing, especially down here at the ankles, that heavy paint on top kind of hides the joints in necessary places. Didn't want to see that pin through there. There's some heaviness here. Actually, pinless knees and pin visible elbows. Up on the shoulders, it's darker where you wouldn't see the disc in the middle. And then here on the torso, where maybe that, is that a ball joint? A uh, dumbbell joint going through there. And at the hips where the ball comes out into there. On the back, it's very strategic. And I'm starting to think, is that paint on top or is that something embedded in the translucent plastic? But look how it almost looks like ribs inside. Barbecue ribs. Mm. Just looking at it, I think this is as close as they could have got with plastic fire, kind of emulating that look. It couldn't be just raging inferno. It looks nice for an action figure. Got some bare feet, you can see the toe sculpt, and then a little bit of claw to the hand coming off the thumb right there, and then off the fingers. But here, the biggest comic book influence is the crown, the brow horns. And it looks like sharp edges, almost like 
not quite bone, but not quite stone, you know? It brings that darker color in too. I, and again, I think that may be inside. How did they do that? It's magic. But then there's the face. And as you guys know by now, I'm not a big fan of screaming faces, but Surtur's in battle or he's screaming from his throne or something. So I'm okay with that, especially since they did such a great job with the teeth. I mean, you're almost afraid to stick your finger in there because he's going to bite it. The tongue inside looks burned, but then the rest of it's kind of a lighter color. Bringing the yellow around the eyes, which are, I guess, painted white on top of it. Oh, nice detail to make those stand out against the rest of the flame look. You can bring it down to where he looks angry. If you're not super picky, and I don't blame anybody for being super picky, because again, the only really big comic element here is the flames themselves and the horns. Body mass wise, it's much thinner than what we saw in the comic books and then, you know, the other details that don't quite match. But again, if you don't mind those differences, you could probably use this on a comic shelf. Maybe give him a black skirt to cover his nethers. And honestly, I'm surprised at the engineering, the articulation they put into a figure this big. But there is a downfall and it's at the shoulders. That sculpt on top of the body, you can already see it. There's a ledge right there. There's a stop. As tight as it is around the whole shoulder ball, there's nowhere that you can avoid that when you try to raise the arm up at the hinge. It's just right there. This one's very tight. The left one seems to be slightly looser and I can kind of get it past that stop. There it is. But then it runs into the sculpt itself because it bulges out. You can get up to about right there compared to this side that comes up to there. So that's not great. But then they came around and put a dumbbell mid torso and a crunch in the abs that is very nicely hidden. In fact, when I pulled it out and I went to move this around, this went and I, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, and then the dumbbell joint at the head doesn't give the greatest up and down, but it goes while well, we're on it. How about we go through articulation? Dumbbell joint at the neck, up, down, ooh, tilt, side to side. Peg coming out to the arm, rotates all the way around. Hinge at the shoulder, ugh. swivel at the bicep, double elbow, I haven't actually, oh, Oh, look at that. Swivel at the wrist and then hinges in and out. You go too far, you're going to pop the peg out, but that's supposed to happen. Dumbbell joint gives you some forward, gives you lots of back, some tilt, some tilt, some rotation. Then there's that hinge right there that gives you just a little bit more forward. Shift that. He's got great crunch. Way back. Ball coming out at the hip, comes up to there, goes back, out. Not all the way, but not bad. There is a little bit of looseness. I don't know if that's that peg flexing right there because it's not dropping. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee, I also haven't done this yet. Let's see how far this goes. So close, but still impressive. I almost missed this too, because of the sculpt, there is a shin swivel right above the ankle. Then that hinges back, hinges forward nicely, and forward facing pin for rocker with some heavy detents in it. I guess they wanted to keep him standing up. For accessories, there are two sword gripping hands, and that is to hold this giant fire type sword. Same translucent plastic. There's some waviness to it, like the flames are just, well, now that I look real close, it's kind of Jolly Rancher. Then the guard is kind of bony. And well, it's almost like the, it's almost lost in the colors of the plastic, but you get up close, you can see some nice detail to it. And then of course a grip, because that's how swords work. With the articulation and uh, the, the way the handle is actually sculpted, it's pretty easy to get a two-handed grip. Thor, son of Odin. But if you don't want those hands, these, as I've shown several times, pop out and then you get a, a left fist if you want a one-handed pose or if you have the sword in the left hand there is an open right hand because all villains need a hand when they're making their speech or spilling their plans i just realized a scale thing that i didn't do is the head itself because <laughs> if you've seen the movie you know what happens and there if it didn't have you know the rest of this head that almost looks well it I guess it is a little small compared to the movie. Oh, but that would have been a kick-ass accessory to have the, you know, headless surter with just the crown. Some chains maybe to hang on figures' backs. And I'm just now noticing that the sword holding hands are hinged in and out. I would have liked to seen at least the right with up and down hinge, you know, weapon wielding hand. Give you a bit more posing options. So at the end of the day, uh, this totally works for me. Surter wasn't high on my list of action figures to add to my Marvel shelf, but when I saw it in person, it, it kind of won me over. The box is large, it stands out on the shelf. The figure itself, you get it out. It, it could be bigger, yes, of course, I know. 
but it does its job, I think. And that's not just me. Oh, Hasbro. Ooh. That's just me being impressed with the figure itself and then my own personal display space and options, which is going to change person to person. If you have a big honking space to put an 18 inch Surter and wished that this was 18 inches, there's nothing wrong with that. So it's all you, you know, and your feelings on official heights and how it should look in the display and how much bigger it is over here and smaller and this and that. But if you're just looking for a starter for the shelf, this may do you. No, I, I would make some changes, especially shaving off the sculpt off the top of the shoulder there. Some wrist hinges, maybe a skull, an alternate head without the mouth open like that. There's a lot of things you could wish for here, but as far as just having a surter on the shelf, if you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. I also wanted to point out the knees are tight as hell. And I'm sure they did that on purpose because of the size of this. Same for the rocker on the ankle. There's position, 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 and it snaps to those points. I really haven't had that much of a problem getting it to stand. Even with the foot not all the way on the floor, it still stands.